Hi everyone, in this section we're going to go over all the different screens there are in Flood so that you have a basic idea of where things are. When you log into Flood, this is likely to be the first screen that you'll see. This is the Flood screen. You can get to it by clicking on the Floods button here or by clicking on the Flood icon. This is a list of all of the floods that you have in one project. We'll go over this screen a little bit more in detail in the analysis section, but for now, suffice it to say that this is where you're going to go to see a dashboard of the real-time results that you get from your test, as well as historical data from previous tests. And over here in the stream screen, you'll see a list of all your current streams. A stream is basically just a kind of test that you're running. So you'll see here that I have streams according to the test tool that I've used. But for example, you could also have one stream for your standard peak load test and another one for a soak test. It just allows you to have an already configured set of parameters like duration or number of threads that you don't have to change every time. So when you go back into the flood screen here, you can then select a test that you want to run more of, and then you can simply click on this gear icon to start more like this. And all of those details will be pulled in through the stream that you selected. From the grid screen, you'll be able to launch a new grid if you haven't already launched one. So let's launch one just so I can show you what it looks like when you already have one running. This orange here means that it's not running yet. So I'm just going to start one node and start it from Ireland. We'll go over the screen a little bit more in detail later. Once you've launched your grid, you'll see it listed here. You can see the region here. And if we had started more than one node, you would see little orange squares for each one. And you can see the status here. If it's hosted, you'll also be able to see that here. We give all of the grids a friendlier name so you don't have to use this unpronounceable identifier. And this one is Tranquil Hopua. Let's wait a little for the grid to start. Looks like our grid node has started and you can see that from the green color here as well as the status here. The extend button is also enabled now. So if you click on that, you can extend the lifetime, the duration of the grid by as many minutes as you want. In case you have a flood that you'd like to run a little bit longer than the grid is active for. You can also reboot a grid or stop it. Scrolling down here, you'll also be able to see the CPU memory and network for the grid that you've just started. It's really good practice to watch this while a test is running because you never want your test to be in this orange section here. If you click on the nodes tab here, you'll also see the specific IP address of the node that we've started. Up here, you'll see the number of node hours that you have left, and it'll count down until you've used up your quota for the month. When you click this, you'll also go to your usage screen. In the usage screen, you'll see the node hours that you started with, as well as any node hours that you've already used. You can also see a bunch of your account settings here, which are mirrored in the menu when you click on your profile picture here. In the team section, you can invite teammates here and you can select different roles for them to have. Guests can only view floods, flooders can run new floods as well, and admins can change billing details as well as invite other teammates. In your subscription screen, you'll be able to see the current plan that you're on and change that if you'd like to. In the integration screen, you'll be able to link your flood accounts with either QTest or AWS. For example, if you'd like to be on our hosted plan, you would go through here to Amazon Web Services and add your AWS account here. You'll also be able to change your personal details, password, and API access. We'll go over the flood API in a later video, but suffice it to say for now that we also allow you to access flood and, and run different floods from the API rather than from the UI so that you can tie it into your other continuous integration tools. In this Tosca section, you'll be able to generate your token that you'll need to put into your copy of Tricentis Tosca in order to connect Tosca to flood. 
and run load tests using your Tosca scripts. This icon here will show you the latest changes that we've made to Flood. We try to push releases pretty regularly to production, and if it's something that we think affects a, a wide number of people, we always announce it here. Clicking on this question mark icon here will bring up a support window where you can start a new conversation with one of our awesome customer success team members, search our database of help articles for your particular question, and see the current status of our systems. And that's it. Now that you know what flood looks like, let's jump right into running your very first flood.